What Pokemon cards did your nieces pop? I don't even, like, I'm not qualified. I was, the, I was in charge of looking up the TCG player price list for all these cards. And even I can't, I don't understand how to look them up. What the hell is Secret? What the hell is Rainbow? What the hell is VMAX? VMAX alt art? I don't even know what the default art is. What the hell is the alt art? It's not possible to look them up. That being said, ooh, baby, <laughs> I am loving this. Oh, <laughs> I really thought that could be the one, dude. Oh, I really thought that could be the one. As someone who's opened some Magic the Gathering booster boxes in my life, I think it was like a once in a lifetime booster box. They got like... Almost every chase rare from Silver Tempest. Again, I don't know um, what that means. I don't know what I'm talking about. But when I was looking up the price list, they got that like Luigi uh, or Lugia VMAX that was like 210 bucks. And then they got like four other Lugias. They got one Lugia that was like, I think it's just the mythic rare version, full stop. Then they got one that was like rainbow colored. Then they got one that was like silver colored. They got a Regia something, Regia Drago V, a mythic rare hollow, um, energy, super energy or something. Like, I honestly worried that we were giving them like, it was a bad lesson for them. Because they're going to think that they're, like, innately lucky. Like, their first data point for gambling is, like, you know, this booster box was, like, 100 bucks, and they got, like, $215 worth of value out of it. Are they actually going to sell it? No. Nobody sells it. They just say, holy cow, I spent 120 bucks on this booster box. I got 200 bucks worth of value. Then you put the cards in sleeves, and then you put them in your closet, and then you die, and, like, your nephew clears them out in the 2070s or something like that. That's the way it goes. Yeah, I did. I was talking about the Pokemon cards that my nieces pulled. I I don't even know how to convey what the cards are because there's so many variants and VMAX and full art, alt art, secret, mystic rare, mythic rare. But they got like every... Wow, that's just a milk bread. Congratulations. This is a great performance. You won by 11 points. They pulled every Lugia that exists. I'll tell you that for sure. They pulled the $200 one. They pulled the... They pulled the base, like, $10 one. They pulled two $30 ones. They pulled them all. Are they big into Pokemon? Not really. But now I think they're hooked on gambling. <laughs> it's... We've made a huge mistake. Koba, I haven't said anything negative about Magic the Gathering, okay? I was just... I, if anything, listen. I know I've said some negative stuff about Magic in my day. But at least, like, and this is, I'm taking a bullet here because chat's going to be furious. At least the cards in Magic are kind of cool. All the art for the Pokemon cards is, like, pure ass. No disrespect to the artists. I'm sure they did what they could with the material available. But, like, every Pokemon card, to me, just looks like, uh, like an NFT. People are like, check out what I pulled! And it's like, uh... It looks like if Han Solo was a plant and he was frozen in carbonite, then people were like, whoa, that's, dude, that looks fresh. And I'm like, well, don't lie to the poor people. It's not insulting to the artists, because all of them look like ass. If I said half of them look like ass, that would be like omega insulting, because to the half that make the ass art. But they all look bad, so obviously something's gone wrong in like the project management stage. I'm insulting the executives, okay? I'm insulting the bureaucrats. The, the tradespeople are doing their best. Are you baiting? Well, kind of. If saying a, a real opinion you have that you know is going to be unpopular is baiting, then yes, I'm baiting. The Adam stuff was baiting. I believe Adams are real. Simply because I believe Niels Bohr is smarter than me. The Pokemon art, I'm legitimately like... I don't know, I just don't get it, I guess. I guess if you grew up playing Pokemon Silver, like it hits a part of your your brain that I don't I, I never built back then. Bro, I didn't even play Silver? I don't know what 
You're calling me a weirdo. You're the one saying like, oh, you look at a picture of like a like a airplane dragon looking back and you're like, oh, this is getting me pogged up. I'm going to put that shit on my damn wall. It's just, I don't know. It's something about the, the art style of Pokemon. I'm, I am not vibing with it. And also not really magic, but I'll take magic like in a heartbeat over, over the Pokemon art. People are like, Lugia is not an airplane. You're thinking of Latios. You hear yourself? You're, you're making my point for me. I'm not baiting, dude. Okay, not every magic card looks good. Like, if you ever want to have a laugh, Google, like, worst Magic the Gathering art. There's some really funny ones. Like, there's this crappy little card called uh, Black Lotus. I don't even get it. What, like, it's supposed to be, like, a flower or something? Okay, just me? All right, I guess I'll go fuck myself then. Good luck, VIP Daniel. What a, what a performance. You got two... You got a, an eagle and a birdie? That's crazy. Yeah, Black Lotus? No thanks. Give me uh, White Lotus on HBO Max. I almost deleted Prediction. I'd like to apologize for that. But, like, for real? I don't know, man. It's just... I'm not saying the art is bad, I guess. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it looks bad to me. Because I have two eyes. I'm not... I'm not... Who died and made me the arbiter of what's good and what's ass, you know? I'm just saying... Did you get a sleeve for that Lugia card? Yep, um, it is sleeved up, and it will be sitting in a closet, I'm sure, until the 2040s. When it is discovered by somebody who says, Wow, this is sleeved, it must be worth a lot of money. Uh, and then they look it up, and they found out that sometime in the 2020s, the bottom fell out of the Pokemon market. Kids are really into, like, vintage Paw Patrol merchandise. Turns out that the Pokemon trading card company actually was printing 10 times more mythic rares than they said they were going to print. Um, so there's way too much supply and it turns out to be worth nothing. They put, they still, they're like one day maybe. So they put it in a big Rubbermaid container and then every single time they move for the next uh, 10 years, they go, ah, I should really just like give this to the Salvation Army or something, but I'm not, maybe I'm just going to keep moving it and then they're going to die. And then like maybe one day, Maybe one day the cards will just decay. What about your Austin Powers cards? Those are safe. Those are still in the... I haven't opened a single one yet. They're still in the booster box. A lot of people don't know. This is the Austin Powers collectible card game. It's rated PG-13, open parentheses, not for the kids. There are 30 11 card booster packs in here. So this is, um, you can see uh, Seth Green. Seth Green, of course, played um, Scott Evil. And that's uh, Kristen Johnson from Third Rock from the Sun. She played Ivana Hump a lot. And then, of course, we can see Mike Myers and Vern Troyer as Fat Bastard and, and Mini-Me. Um... And then there's another Mike Myers as uh, as Fat Bastard there. I forget who plays Frau Farbissena. I knew her name at one point. I don't know it anymore. Pretty good. The pretty good value, honestly. No Heather Graham on the side. Now that's a little crazy. Mindy Sterling, of course. She was in the sequel. Bro, that's the fucking sequel. I can't believe you saw Fat Bastard on the box and you you tried to power explain to me. You tried to try to powers. You saw Fat Bastard Mini Me on the box, and you said, "Oh, that's Austin Powers One." Do you even know what the fuck you're talking about? Austin Powers One does not contain Fat Bastard. The Fat Bastard role of a secondary villain is played by Random Task, who throws a shoe. Honestly, honestly, that really hurt. 